You're listening <clears throat> and watching to a very special podcast. Excuse me, I was clearing my throat. I think it's a little crackling because <laughs> I had potato chips. <laughs> they were they were really good. Anyway, let's do this, shall we? Guerrero stormed over. She had a, a bandage patch on the back of her neck. And she was walking into this building. And she called out, You know, I know you're here, and I'm really not in a good mood to hear any more excuses, so you're not going to hide from me that easily. She heard a sigh. Oh, here she is, the lady of the hour. <sighs> Boy, are we in so much trouble. We, I think... <laughs> I think, uh, somebody has a lot of explaining to do. This made Alex annoyed. I know it's me, so don't even try to brag it. Hold on, I was just... Barrera then stood over at the five, as she said. You know, somebody's got a lot of explaining to do. Or were you the ones that conspired in that whole kidnapping with Silver? Alex looked surprised. What? Oh. What happened? Where is she? Good question. Do you know? Hey, hey, hey. We were not involved in that, okay? We don't even know who this Ben guy is. Or maybe you do. You know exactly where he is now, don't you? You know, I don't want to hear any more stories, any more excuses. I just had enough of all of this bullshit. Alex was annoyed. <sighs> I did not put that cicata in you. Oh really? I want to know who did. Because now I had like a thousand rapid growing eggs in there and nobody even told me about it and I was waiting for the results and now I I I discovered I can control the cicada bugs with my mind too can you tell me how you can explain that to me whoa I didn't know you sent out a cicada bug I didn't I Alex started to say, but he stopped. Then he slowly turned around, and there she was just standing there. Mia. Mia just looked calm. Sorry, she said. I wasn't intending on hurting her. I just thought maybe she needed a little breakthrough. Besides, Nobody has even mentioned the inspector of any sorts of information. People were really getting suspicious that maybe somebody was snitching, but there was nobody. Where are you getting at? Barrer said. They never really snitched on you. They care a lot about you, and also for another particular reason. Barrer was confused. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know why nobody has snitched on you? Because you told them to. Yeah, I was upset at them, but I wasn't intending on threatening them. I know. But then I discovered something, and I don't think you realize this, but did you know that you can also mind control people? No. Or I said, no, I, I, why do you think that they never said anything? Because you, you actually told them to, but you didn't realize that your eyes were glowing a bit and you managed to, managed to make sure nobody said anything, right? Did I do that? I, I didn't realize my eyes were... 
Oh my god. It must have been... It must have been Rosemary. Yeah, during that time when we were in the apocalyptic city, where uh, you, Kimizuki, and I, I know. So, how do you know about it? Lola called out. She was joined by you, Aaron, Kimizuki, and Jean. Let's just say I had to interview a few people and they managed to tell me a few results. I'm not saying you're in trouble, but I think maybe you're not discovering yourself hard enough. So I just thought I would give you a hand. And also, I managed to find an expert. That's when this expert appeared. Ferrer looks shocked. Who are you? The woman appeared, smiling, as she said. Pleasure to meet you. My name is Deborah Hope, but you can call me Debbie. Mind if we talk elsewhere? Moments later, Ferrer and Lola, as well as the other guys, were there, and Debbie sat across, hands folded and her face calm. I am sure you're aware of Ophelia Fury. I am too. <sighs> I never thought maybe she would do something this crazy. I know. She's been haunting my friends, scaring them out of their wits. And now I'm gonna have to put my foot down. And all because she was the one that managed to give me these powers so that maybe I can be more like her. And now, maybe I am trying to be more like her, huh? Brewer said. Debbie's heart began to soften. Her face w looked like it was showing hints of empathy. Honey, Ophelia never gave you those powers. She looked down for a moment and then looked back up saying, I did. Barrera thought she was going to fall out of her chair, but she managed to steady herself up as she said, What? Lola gasped. You're kidding. No way. You? Why? Barrera exclaimed. Because you gotta fight fire with fire. And also, you are the only one to stop Ophelia. That's why you're, you gave me these powers? To stop her? I don't think there's any way we can stop her. Yeah? Can you think of anybody else that can stop her? Huh? Think about it. Who else out there can stop a girl like her? Huh? Who? And I'm doing this because of one reason. I just want to help Ophelia. And it's my fault that she's become like this. How is this your fault? You didn't do anything. You don't know that. Um, did any of you solve that part in, of her memory? Where that nose bleeding incident? Burr recalled that. Yes! Yes, I remember! You were part of that. I know. I felt really bad about it. Wait a second. Are you saying you're doing this out of atonement? I'm doing it because. I want to help people like her because nobody helped her. All they did was show hatred towards her for no reason. She was just like everybody else. Just like everybody else. And nobody shed any kindness to her. And I was the one that felt guilty. She didn't deserve this. And it's because of me. She's going on a havoc. 
Brewer felt bad. Oh, man. High school was really tough on her. <sighs> High school? How about all through her childhood, from preschool to elementary to middle school to high school? We were all going to graduate. It was supposed to be our junior year. But all we did was pick on her, be mean to her, and everything else. We didn't know the pain she suffered.